going to show you a couple things here. This is part two of our discussion on um, the immune system uh, and the gut. Not going to take a lot of time. I'm going to try to allow for more time for your questions and maybe any, um, any stories that you would like to share more than anything. So I'm going to try to just make this as concise as possible to give you just one additional thing, maybe two additional things over what we talked about last week that should be an eye opener for you, okay? Because I had a lot of questions after last week, a lot more questions than I thought was going to we were going to receive. Uh, I thought we had a lot of questions on the on the uh, on the meeting, but afterwards it was just a bunch of emails and text messages coming in with question after question after question. So I'm going to try to you know encapsulate as many of them in this discussion today as possible. So here's here's the first thing that you need to know. As far as bacteria uh, is concerned, there's a 10 to 1 ratio. Humans, our human body, your human body, has about 10 trillion cells. But you are host to somewhere, in, it's estimated to be 100 trillion bacteria. So you're actually more bacteria than you are human. We're just... We're just there to carry around all these bacteria. They played, you know, a variety of roles uh, from the outside of your skin. If you looked at your skin under a microscope, you'd be afraid. You'd be thinking, what are these things crawling all over me? So don't ever look under a microscope to see what's going on on your skin because there's all kinds of things all over you everywhere, you know, from inside your mouth to just outside the mouth, around the eyes, everywhere in your skin, the bacteria, they're, they're performing a role, they're performing a function, they're doing their job. Uh, they were designed to do what they do. But the ones that we're focused on right now are the ones in the gut. They are critically, critically important to what's called the gut biome. The gut biome is so delicately balanced that there are trillions and trillions of, of bacteria from, from the beginning of your stomach, all throughout the stomach, in the small intestine, into the large intestine, and all throughout that play a role in helping to break down. It actually makes you what you are. Uh, there is a, um, a treatment now that um, for some people is considered controversial, but there are some people who are so desperate trying to find out what's wrong with them. No doctor um, has been able to treat them. They just can't explain what's wrong with them. They've tried every, every possible treatment and the diagnosis is there's nothing wrong. So um, I saw this documentary and I wish I could give you the details on it. I just recently saw some data on it. Now I'll, I'll, I'll dig it up for you maybe the next time we have the discussion or email to anyone that's interested. But what, they, uh, what the doctors finally concluded was that uh, her uh, gut biome was, um, was damaged. And the only thing that was going to help her was a total gut biome transplant. So what they do is they pay someone who has a healthy gut biome. They pay them for their feces. They sanitize it, put it in capsules, and the person goes through a series of treatments where they literally swallow these capsules that is feces, is the bacteria from a healthy person. And um, it's been successful. A total, total gut biome transplant. It's been successful. No explanation as to what was wrong with the person. Change the gut biome. Life goes on completely back to normal. Now, I'm only sharing that with you, not from the, the, the stomach turning part of it, but for, the, for you to, to try to understand how important the, the bacteria in your gut is. Uh, for people who, at the first sign of trouble, run to the doctor and ask for an antibiotic, you have no idea the damage that we're doing to our, our gut biome because the antibiotics that we receive they don't care about only killing the bad guys. They, it kills all of them. And it's a, it's a broad spectrum antibiotic for the most part where they're hoping to kill more of the bad guys than the good guys. That's the way it works. Now, maybe you're not the kind of person that goes and runs to the, 
to the uh, to the doctor asking for um, antibiotics uh, all the time. Some of us are consuming large amounts of antibiotics and we're not even aware of it. Um, for example, did you know um, if you were uh, a carnivore like I am, that the way that uh, farmers make sure that the animals that we consume are healthy, they feed them uh, antibiotics prophylactically so that they can reduce the instances of disease uh, in their herd. So rather than reacting to it, waiting till they observe one of them being sick, what they do is they just routinely add antibiotics into the feed. So all, all of the chicken, all of the cows, all of the pigs are being fed antibiotics. So are, are you thinking that maybe the antibiotics just leaves the body in the waste? No, it's all throughout the meat. So the moment that we eat meat, we're actually consuming large amounts of antibiotics. Guess what that's doing to your gut biome? You got it. It's doing, it's wreaking havoc on our gut uh, biome. Then, Take it one step further. We talked about this a little bit last week where we talked about genetically modified foods. Um, I didn't spend a lot of time talking about uh, how that works, but um, if you do, just Google it. And uh, there's a, a website from Harvard University where they actually describe what the objective is with, um, with GMOs. So they find some crop that they want to improve then they go find some place in nature, somewhere in the natural cycle, a particular genetic component that is resistant to or has the characteristic that they want. Then they take that characteristic and splice it into the crop that they're trying to yield. So in other words, if you have say uh, a particular vegetable that is resistant to freezing, well go find some plant that uh, never freezes, some plant that grows uh, in the uh, in the Antarctic and stays green, find the trait in that plant, then bring that trait back in and splice it into the plant that grows in Hawaii uh, or wherever it's growing so that it won't freeze. Whatever the characteristic is, they splice it in. And they used to inject it in, but now they know how to go in and gene splice it uh, right in, modify the genome. Then they grow that um, that new seed. And now the plant has that new genetic trait. So they began to genetically modify uh, foods much more uh, than you realize. Um, here's a list of them that I found right on the uh, Harvard website. I'm not sure if you can see it very well. It looks kind of small on my screen. I hope it's large enough on your screen. But the one on top of the list is corn. So what they wanted was if they wanted it to be resistant to insects, they wanted it to be tolerant of herbicides uh, and a few other things, okay? So higher yield. So they wanted to make more corn out of less land uh, and they succeeded. Cotton, soybean, by the way, almost all corn that you buy at the stores now is genetically modified. Almost all soybean is genetically modified. And you can see the list goes on, potatoes, tomatoes, um, alfalfa, uh, beets, rice, apples, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all genetically uh, re-engineered. Uh, someone decided that the creator didn't do a good enough job. So they want to improve um, how these things work. That would be okay if it didn't create problems for your gut biome. Because remember, look at the second item on the list there for the corn. The second item on the list, tolerance to herbicides. What is an herbicide? An herbicide is a little thing called glyphosate. Glyphosate is a derivative of Agent Orange, but they don't call it glyphosate. They don't call it Agent Orange uh, when you go to the store to buy it. When you go to the store to buy it, it's called Roundup. So Roundup is an herbicide. So they've genetically re-engineered corn, rice, soybean, and so many other things so that Roundup won't kill it. Roundup won't destroy it. You can go to the store, to, to um, Home Depot, 
chat, try it. I, I, in fact, I'd like for someone to just experiment with this if you're willing to do it. Go buy a gallon of, uh, of Roundup and go buy just a single ear of corn. Or take one out of your refrigerator if you have it. Put it in a glass jar, pour it in so you can see it and drop that ear of corn uh, in the Roundup. And, uh, and if everything that I've been reading is true and all the tests that I've seen is true, it'll be there till next year. That herbicide Roundup will not destroy it. They, they engineered it so that it wouldn't be destroyed by an herbicide. This is an herb, a vegetable that is not destroyed by an herbicide, genetically re-engineered. Now, again, that wouldn't be a problem except for the fact that the roots of the corn goes into the soil. While they're busy spraying the Roundup over the, over the fields, and that Roundup is landing and killing all the weeds, the Roundup is going into the soil. The corn doesn't know the difference between our chemicals in the soil and nutrients in the soil. It absorbs it right into the plant. So every time we eat corn, we're consuming glyphosate. And glyphosate is toxic. It's very, very harmful uh, to the body. We talked about this a little bit last week, so I'm not gonna linger uh, on that. Glyphosate is extremely harmful. They've already found it to be in 80% of all of our uh, breakfast cereals, uh, grains. And uh, I got a text message before this meeting. The question was, is glyphosate or weed killer uh, in, uh, in grits? Well, grits is made of corn. So you, um, you uh, can draw your own conclusions uh, on that one. But um, they definitely found it to be in uh, in oatmeal, they found it to be in uh, granola bars, they found it to be in your Cheerios, they found that uh, the honey honey nut Cheerio was the, had the highest amount of, uh, of glyphosate in the test that was done. It's been linked to, this is just a short list of the uh, health issues, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, impairing the body's ability to fully function uh, to produce fully functioning proteins, that does not sound uh, good at all. Uh, inhibiting this particular pathway, parenthetically, you see what it says? It's found in gut bacteria. Mm. Um, and then uh, on and on and on. We talked about this uh, last week. If you want to see part one of the discussion, just go to my uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Jonathan Jones. And uh, I'd appreciate it if you all would subscribe uh, to the channel. It does help and, uh, and share these videos with others if you feel it would be of any uh, benefit to them. But once you get to the channel, please click on subscribe. And if there's a video that you appreciate or benefit from, just click like, it, uh, it does help. It helps get attention and helps to actually get the word out uh, about um, the information that we're sharing with uh, the general public. But third from the bottom, did you notice it? disrupting your microbiome by acting as an antibiotic. So that's what glyphosate uh, does. So um, when it comes to the gut uh, biome, what you don't want is to be ingesting um, weed killer. So the number one thing on top of the list that I would encourage you to do if you want to improve your gut microbiome and microbiota is to stop eating weed killer. Now I posted it in, in the WhatsApp chat a, uh, a shopping guide so that you can find uh, what kinds of foods don't have um, glyphosate in it, what does not have weed killer, and uh, which uh, products out there have not been genetically uh, modified. Very difficult. Uh, it is not easy. But you don't want to just buy something that says organic. You, you're looking for something that says 100% organic because now the government has allowed something to be labeled as organic if it only has a certain percentage of uh, time or components in it that have not been uh, genetically uh, modified or re-engineered or has not been exposed to glyphosate or something, but it still um, can be very, very harmful to you or it could have been genetically uh, modified. So look, if, look for things that say 100% uh, organic. Um, it's more expensive and I understand that, but you, know, you, you, you just make the decision. Uh, I think it was Benjamin Franklin that said that an ounce of prevention was better than a pound of cure. So if you spend that ounce on the front end, it's better than dealing with the pound of cure on the back end and spending time with the doctor. So uh, invest in yourself, invest in your health. Um, Joanne and I have decided, that's my wife, we, we decided that we would 
um, put our health insurance funds uh, into um, eating better quality food. We had no choice because uh, it turns out Joanda was suffering from leaky gut syndrome and uh, she was allergic to everything. She was especially allergic to weed killer because um, everything that she was eating was killing her. Her gut biome was completely out of whack and mainly because of uh, the weed killer. But uh, the um, one of the other things, I, I didn't say much about this with the genetically modified organisms. Um, you saw on the list there that they want to make the, the GMO product into an insecticide, right? Resistant to, to insects and pests. Um, the way that the plant, corn and soybean and others, uh, destroy or, or act as a pesticide is it punches holes microscopically in the cells of the pest. And this is a problem that they're having right now with the uh, honeybees. It's a serious problem because it's, it's throwing off the entire ecology in this country because the, the honeybees are dying in a lot at an alarming rate right now because they're pollinating and they're running into these GMO plants and they're being affected by it because they consume, you know, uh, the, the nectar. And so they consume this and they're getting punched in their gut with these little microscopic holes and it's killing off millions and millions of honeybees. So it's a huge problem that, that's taking place right now. Anyway, the same thing that's happened to the honeybees is happening inside your stomach. The stomach lining is very, very thin. It's only one cell thick. It looks like there's some, some substance there in that picture, but it's only one cell thick, one cell. So you're punching holes in that. That's called intestinal permeability. That's what Joanda was suffering from, leaky gut syndrome. You build up the epithelials, with colostrum. It's the number one way to build the epithelials is with colostrum. The best colostrum we found uh, on the market is one called Immune RX. I-M-M-U-N-R-X. It's available at uh, americsbio.com. A-M-E-R-X B-I-O.com. That's a company that we own. So that's um, that's the, uh, the only website that we have found it on. That we place it there. There's nowhere else available on the market. So that's the only spot you can find it. AmericsBio.com. Outstanding. It's amazing what it does for the gut and helps to restore the, uh, the gut biome. You also want to make sure that you're putting in 50 billion CFUs of a good, high-quality probiotic into your gut. One of the best that we found on, on the internet is called Garden of Life. You can just get that on Amazon for about $20. In fact, you can pay between $20 and $60. And then you can actually pay more than that for, uh, for uh, a probiotic. But the Garden of Life one, that, that variety seems to be a pretty good one. They make a raw organic um, colon formula. Uh, that's the one that we're using right now. They, they make a female formula. They make you know, several different formulas. So just find the one that you think that you like and, uh, and go with that. But I do recommend that you try to go with the, uh, the organic one. It would be better for you. But 50 billion a day, not 10 billion, not 150 billion, 50 billion CFUs per day is what you should put, be putting into your gut to restore your gut uh, biome. Now, after you've done those two, two key things, there's a couple other things that you can do also, by the way, xylitol. Xylitol, um, bacteria loves it. That is the bad bacteria. The bad bacteria love xylitol and it's like poison to them. To you, it's just like sugar, it's a sweetener. So if you wanna switch your sweetener to xylitol, that will help kill bad bacteria uh, in your gut as well. Uh, Dr. Nakuzi um, shared that information with us at one time. A really good thing to use as a sweetener. You can just change to that and just use that as a sweetener in general. Kills off bad bacteria, good bacteria, does no harm to them at all. So colostrum, Immunirex, good probiotic uh, daily, xylitol, those are good things. And on top of all of that, microdaily. Microdaily will just support your organ health. And remember, we're talking about trying to detoxify the body because the one thing you don't want in your body is glyphosate. So you, the most powerful detoxification component that, that, that I found so far was produced by this man, Dr. Prasad. So Michael Daly uh, is his uh, crowning achievement. I think it's, it really should have put this man on the map and I think they should have awarded him the Nobel Peace Prize for it, but, um, but that's okay. Uh, we're just fortunate that we have access to him and his brilliance is at our fingertips. The formula that he produced has received uh, these patents. So in conjunction with the United States government, uh, the seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different patents that were awarded uh, to this product. 
The one on top of the list there, as you can see, the purpose of it is DNA repair and DNA protection and repair. That's a very good thing. That's what you want to start happening to you. Um, and the, the, the sixth one down, all the way on the right, you can see what it does, micronutrient for pulmonary and heart health. And the last one, micronutrient for treatment of diabetes mellitus. By the way, glyphosate has been linked. One of the diseases that glyphosate has been linked to is uh, diabetes. Uh, also linked to pulmonary problems, also linked to uh, heart problems, also linked to various cancers, also linked to many digestive uh, disorders. So micro daily supports your immune system going back into balance and helping you to deal with the massive amounts of weed killer that we've been being fed uh, and antibiotic, antibiotics that we've been, uh, we've been fed uh, over the years. Oh, by the way, that's the fourth thing that you can do is um, try to find grass-fed uh, food. If you are a carnivore, stop eating the conventional stuff. Try to find the one that's grass-fed. Um, cows were not designed to eat corn. Cows were designed to eat grass. When cows eat corn, it creates a huge problem in their system. It makes them fat. It makes them fat. And that's what the farmers want. But, um, but that's not good for you. There's other, there's other problems, including E. coli and other things that come with, um, with the fact that cows uh, eat uh, corn. You don't want a corn-fed cow. You want grass-fed cow. So if you can find grass-fed beef, go with that if you're a beef eater. And, uh, and pork, very difficult to find antibiotic-free uh, pork, but that's what you want to look for. You want to look for meats that are antibiotic-free, free-range, and grass-fed, okay? So that's the other thing you do to, to help your diet if you want to slow down antibiotics and weed kill it from going into your, into your body. Okay, get back to micro daily. So these are the two formulas that I particularly like the most. The, uh, the one on the left with CoQ10, um, I'm hoping that they're going to rename that one a micro daily original. Ignore the fact that it says with CoQ10 because all of the micro daily formulas have CoQ10. Okay, so micro daily um, original is the one in the green bottle. Then micro daily plus with CBD is, uh, is my uh, all time favorite because every cell in your body has CBD receptors. Every cell in your body wants CBD. I recommend that you get your CBD from a legal source like the hemp plant, not the marijuana plant. It is legal to, uh, to consume CBD uh, from hemp. And it is not, and, and, and it's moral too, by the way, it's ethical. So there's nothing inappropriate about consuming CBD that has been extracted from hemp because it's not le illegal uh, in this country. And there's no THC uh, in the product, but uh, it is very good for anxiety and has a host of other benefits to the cells. And uh, the list of ingredients on micro daily, when you look at it, it doesn't look like it's very much. It's not very impressive when you look at it, but it's not the ingredients that, that, uh, that make the difference here. It's the combination, it's the specific combination. It's the, it's the load of antioxidants, the way that it behaves in the body all simultaneously. It's one thing to take a particular vitamin C or a vitamin E or, um, or pycnogenol or some other components but it's a whole nother thing where you take them in this particular combination, the way that Dr. Um, Dr. Prasad uh, has suggested. For the average person, two capsules twice a day is sufficient. Um, it also has N-acetylcysteine in it, which raises lymphocytic glutathione levels. Alpha-lipoic acid recirculates glutathione in the body, uh, along with the CoQ10 is, uh, is a great combination. But as you can see, that's a combined 170 milligrams, that particular proprietary blend versus many other things that are, have much higher uh, levels. But Dr. Prasad figured out that these smaller amounts, right, these, these micrograms of these components that's been uh, added in to, uh, to each capsule is the exact quantities of this particular combination, this formula. It is unique and it is extremely powerful. But uh, just to spotlight a couple of the things that it, that it has in it, I just mentioned alpha lipoic acid and N-acetylcysteine. Um, there have been some claims that N-acetylcysteine is, um, is harmful and is toxic, and I can tell you 100% with certainty now that that is completely bogus and is not true at all. Uh, Dr. Prasad has also done the research on it, and he too did not find any uh, articles indicating that oral N-acetylcysteine is toxic or harmful to you at all. The only possible N-acetylcysteine that might be toxic is the one that's intravenous. They take a bag and hang it on, on a 
on a poll uh, intravenously if a person has overdosed on Tylenol and acetaminophen in the hospital. And they'll, they'll uh, infuse an entire bag of it uh, into the person. If you did that a few times, yeah, that would be toxic and it would kill you. Understandable, okay? So that's the only article that uh, that Dr. Prasad found is if, if you completely overdose on it and take it at an extreme amount like that, but you know, anything taken in an extreme would do that. So but anyway, oral N-acetylcysteine is not uh, harmful. Um, vitamin E succinate crosses the blood-brain barrier and also happens to be cytotoxic to cancer cells. And that's one of my favorite benefits of this vitamin E succinate. I told you about the micro daily plus already. If you don't um, want to take the micro daily plus combined with the CBD, you can just boost your CBD with these two uh, products right here. These are great. I, ha I get one of the uh, 1500 milligrams every month and I take one of those at night just before I go to sleep also, along with three of the Micro Daily Plus uh, capsules and it helps me to get a fuller, deeper night of unbroken sleep. And uh, maybe on one of our future discussions, we'll talk about the importance of having unbroken sleep. Extremely important to have unbroken sleep. You need six to eight hours of unbroken sleep to remain uh, healthy. Okay, so we're gonna basically pause here and give you an opportunity to ask your questions and to, uh, to give us a few comments on maybe how you benefited from, uh, from micro daily or things that you may have done in, uh, in improving your uh, gut biome uh, or uh, any other particular uh, story that you'd like to, uh, to share with us. But uh, if you're here for the first time and want to get the deepest discount on any of these products, just get back with the person who invited you and they'll help you to set up a subscription. And when you buy a subscription, you get a 25% discount uh, plus you get, uh, after four or five orders, I think you build up enough credit to get one free in addition to that. So there's all kinds of benefits to uh, getting the product on subscription. Okay, so that's part two of our discussion on the immune system uh, and uh, the gut. So I'm going to stop the, uh, the share right now, the PowerPoint presentation and um, you can, if you have a comment or something that you'd like to share, then now's the time for you to go ahead and and uh, and raise your hand. And the best way too to do that is you need to make sure that you put on put on your video on your camera, and then that way we can see you and add you to the screen as well. All right, Catherine. Yes. See your question, <laughs> Catherine. Thank you, Hazel. We'll come back to you. Oh. Okay. Last week you had mentioned that someone with diabetes. And I guess a certain age, along with the micro daily, calcium and magnesium is two things they need to take. Correct. Or over should 40. take. Women over 40 should add uh, magnesium okay, and calcium. Did, Correct. Yeah. What I needed to know is what would be a good, because there is uh, calcium and magnesium in the formula, a good um, calcium and magnesium without a lot of these fillers because I went to Walmart looking um, Saturday and I couldn't yeah. believe what followed it. Yeah. There's they a lot had of them. some, I didn't even want to write them down. I knew they were no good. Yeah. In the actual both products. So, and I um, know you said not to take them at the same time. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. And I have to tell you that I have not. Um, I haven't checked to see which brand uh, would be good. Um, I do know that uh, mm -hmm. I've used the Now brand before. It's an orange bottle. Uh, I have used it, but I have okay. not tested. Um, I've not tested it with any um, biofeedback uh, machines or devices or right. with physiology to see how strong it is. So, you, but you can test that for yourself. But uh, take a look at that Now brand. Okay, I, yeah, I, it, yeah. It's possible yeah. that that might be a good one. Um, I also know a friend of mine who was connected to Solar Ray for many years, and um, no, that I've heard was supposedly uh, another uh, good brand. But um, you know, okay. buy them, buy them, and test them before you open them, so that you can always take them back and uh, and go from right. there. Right. Right. Okay. And then whatever you find out, let let us know, please. I will. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James and Angelique Greer. Okay, I'm ready. All right. I just I just wanted to comment on that um, 
what you were talking about earlier about the peel, taking the poop peel. Uh -huh. <laughs> they had one of those doctor um, TV shows where a woman did that. She took her daughters, who was like five years old or something, but they found out that the daughter had cancer because the mother got cancer from doing that. And I thought that was interesting. I don't know if that happens in real life, but I thought it was interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. Thank you for uh, for sharing that. Um, I And that's why I said too that some of that stuff is controversial, you don't know, but the people who claim that they benefited from it, claim that they benefited uh, from it. And uh, and it's still, it is still a treatment that's being done to this day, you know, even now. So, okay, thank you very much though. Uh, Becca has... Um, a Hello. question for Hi. us. Hi, Becca. How are you? I'm doing good. Doing good. Thanks for asking. So I remember how you said it helps you with stress and all that. I have a friend who has MS. How um, can you explain to me how it would actually help with the MS? How Micro, micro daily I'm at? Yeah. Micro daily with uh, MS? Mm -hmm. MS is, um, is very complicated. Um, there's a whole field of study centered around uh, the mitochondria. They started studying it. They, they started to realize that the mitochondria, when damaged by free radicals and oxidative stress, creates what they call mitochondrial disorders. Multiple sclerosis is in the mitochondrial disorder uh, family. So the mitochondria produces energy inside the cell it gives off oxy radicals. So a free radical comes in and can get inside the cell and create damage to the DNA and it can do damage to the mitochondria. The mitochondria in producing energy gives off oxy radicals. If those radicals aren't removed from the cell, that's what can turn around and do damage to the DNA or the mitochondria. What microdaily does is provides the antioxidants that are needed to remove those oxidants from inside the cells, free radicals and oxy radicals that are produced by the mitochondria. So microdaily is a, is a great way of raising glutathione. See, glutathione is the master antioxidant produced right inside the cell. That's what can bind to free radicals and oxy radicals inside the cell and move them outside the cell so that they can be transported out of the body as waste. So that's one of the ways that microdaily uh, behaves when it comes to a multiple uh, sclerosis and any other mitochondrial uh, disorder and any level of oxidative stress uh, in the body. But now if a person has progressed and they're in advanced stages of, of uh, multiple sclerosis, then um, I wouldn't expect that it would be able to, to do a huge amount. It will ameliorate the symptoms and the distress level that they're in. But uh, as far as resolving um, the issue, the level of damage, it, it, it may not take it to that point. I would highly recommend uh, adding Immune RX along with microdaily for someone who has MS because MS can also be um, precipitated by bacteria, a bacterial problem. So the uh, Immune RX spray has been very good uh, in helping some people with, uh, with MS help their immune system be able to target the problem with um, MS better. And I, I shared one example of um, one, um, one woman, this goes back about four years ago, I'm drawing a blank now on her name for some reason, but um, her doctor told her she had two weeks to live, and uh, her her uh, the muscles in her her throat was just weren't working properly, and it was going to be just a matter of time before, when she went to eat, it was going to route the food down into her lungs instead of into her stomach, and she was going to suffocate. So um, she started taking the Immune RX. It improved her body's immune function to such a degree that she lived for probably four or five years after that. 
So um, I still don't know what her ultimate reason for dying was, but I do know that she did not die in two weeks. And I do know that the one thing she did was add Immunirex to her diet. Okay? Thank Hope you. That, you're very welcome. Hope it helps. Uh, okay, Estelito, it looks like you're on the top of the list there, but um, I'm also, so well, okay, Estelito, let's take your question. Hi, Jonathan. Hi, everybody. This is one of the questions of uh, one of our health advocate in our team. <clears throat> one of our client uh, is taking micro daily and it's giving her a headache. And she is also taking uh, the brain boost with micro daily. It lessened the headache. That's what uh, I. I was told in her text. Mm -hmm. And they used to be uh, with Immunical, they used to take Immunical and also the mother of her client and the pain is back because they stopped using Immunical. So anyway, um, I, I told her that that question was already asked before. It's a detox reaction mm -hmm. her client. So uh, is she going to lessen the micro daily in that case in order to lessen the headache or? How much micro daily is she taking and how much water is she drinking? Yeah, she did not tell me, but I told her uh, if, it, if the body weight is 150, it has to be divided by two. And then that's the uh, amount of water that the client is going to take. And she told that she told that beforehand. She told that to the client. So I don't, don't know. Is it saying. the regular regular micro daily or micro daily with EMF that she's taking? Apparently, it's the uh, regular micro daily. Mm -hmm. And do you know if it's two capsules or three or how many? She probably do two capsules. She didn't say it, but uh, that's the recommendation: two capsules twice two a capsules. day. Capsules. And yeah. you know how old she is? How old? Mm, she didn't say the age. Okay, because there could be there could be other issues, you know, going on. Oh. Uh, it could, there could be things that she's doing to exacerbate the uh, the problem. Now. Um, I, the first thing I would say is, yes, it's probably a detox reaction, and she probably just is not drinking enough water. That's usually what happens. And uh, I also found out that having been a former Immunical user, that uh, micro daily detox is at a different level. Um, I did not think that I needed to detox. I didn't think I would go through a detox <laughs> when I started taking micro daily. I was shocked at what happened. I developed some rashes in different parts. It all went away. I got, I think, a little bit of headaches at the beginning also uh, that I just did not think was going to happen to me, but uh, but it did. But it's, it's a pretty good chance it's a detox reaction and just ride it out and muscle through it. I would increase it by one more capsule and drink more water. So increase by one more capsule and drink more water. Roll into it. I don't, instead of backing off, I'd roll into it. Just speed it up. <laughs> Do it <even> more <laughs> and, um, and get past the detox because... Remember, the clinical studies indicated that, that uh, Immunical raises glutathione levels by 35.5%. That's Immunitech's own research studies. Raises mm -hmm. glutathione levels by 35.5%. This is not focused just on raising glutathione levels, though it does that. It's mm -hmm. providing a huge number of other antioxidants into the picture. So it's going to be detoxing from multiple pathways. Okay. And Herxheimer effect, which is what detox reaction is, Herxheimer effects is that when these antioxidants run up and grab all these toxins, it dumps them into the bloodstream. And if you're not drinking enough water, the blood starts to get thicker, when full of these toxins and things. That's what triggers headaches and sometimes can trigger nausea and other effects on the person. So they've got to drink more water. If, if they're not drinking enough water, they can expect to get a headache. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. I'll let her know. All right, you're very welcome. Okay, um, um, Venus was, I think, the uh, the next hand up. 
Hey, Alfreda, welcome. Glad you could join us. <clears throat> okay, I had several. Uh, this is my first time here. And I had several questions and it might not be, some of the questions may not be appropriate for right now, but I thought I'd just speak with you and you can get back with me on it. Well, here's, um, first, here's what you can do, Venus. Yeah. Uh, give me your top question. My main thing is I have osteo rheumatoid. Um, I'm in early kind of moderate stages. My lack of energy and brain fog is one of my major issues. Um, and um, I've been doing a totally, I guess, vegetable diet. Um, I'm still trying to rule out which vegetables are harmful or better for me than others. Um, so I'm basically down to rabbit food and I'm sure I'm not getting enough protein. Um, I wanted to know the combination of micro daily. I just, um, purchase two months worth of the micro daily that goes into your water. You know, I'm a water drinker. Mm -hmm. Hydro. But, um, yeah, but I, I, I would like to know what combination would you suggest? I would um, suggest one packet of hydro three times a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Three times a day? Yes. Now, because you're dealing with the... Um, uh, the, the early onset of the um, rheumatoid arthritis, that will probably be sufficient to kind of, you know, keep things at bay for you. It'll probably be sufficient to keep it at bay, but you may okay. end up having to increase that by a half a bag on each dose. Okay, so it's a, it's a slim possibility that you may have to increase it, but just stick with the one, one, um, one stick of hydro three times a day, and that should probably slow everything down. Your energy level is definitely going to go up, so you can expect really? that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can expect your energy levels to go up and your pain to uh, to go down. That's what my mom and my aunt is telling me. And uh, um, and is it anything else? Because I, could, I keep getting these uh, muscle spasms. I can try to put a sock on. As soon as I bend my leg, I get that, uh, what we used to call Charlie horse. Yeah, calcium. And, okay. Yeah, you need and, more calcium more calcium and more potassium. Got it. How about, uh, how about uh, more of the, um, it's in the Epsom salts. That's why I do, I bathe and I put the Epsom salts and you get the magnesium in it with yeah. that. Yeah, you'll get some, uh, you'll get some temporary uh, benefits from that. But if you want to stop those Charlie horses and cramps, Increase your calcium. Calcium, mm -hmm. and you said something. Yeah, the, the oh, potassium. The, potassium. The best, uh, the best calcium. So that potassium, you can get that in bananas and papaya. But uh, okay. try to find a papaya that's growing on a tree in somebody's yard, not one of those GMO one that's that's putting glyphosate in your body. Got it. But um, the uh, the best calcium is um, the immunotech. Immunotech, in my opinion, makes the best calcium out there. It's extracted from milk. And uh, I, would you spell that for me? Immunotech. I-M-M-U-N-O-T-E-C. But you can ask Alfreda about that. She can help you with that. Okay. All right. And who do I speak to about becoming uh, not just a... Do you guys got representatives? Or representatives uh, for this that yeah, there's like about forty of them on the on this call right now. Yeah, well, that's why I'm asking because I don't know. So mm -hmm. who would I speak with uh, talk for to, that? Talk to Alfreda. She'll help you out. Okay, Alfreda yeah. is who? She's uh, she's your uplines upline. But we're gonna have a brief business meeting right after this meeting. So if you want to stick around, we're gonna be having a business meeting right after this meeting. I'll stick around. Okay. Got we'll it. Help Thank you, with you that, for okay? your time. Oh, Thank you for your welcome. time. Appreciate Glad to it. have you with us and welcome. Uh huh. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> That's um, all I got. <laughs> okay, very good. Let's see here. Um, Angelique Greer is back in there again, but you Hello. only have one comment. Okay, Angelique, we'll take your comment and then we're going to go straight to um, um, Victor. That must be Ad Adnalina. Go ahead. Um, so I have a friend, so this is a question. She has IBS, 
but she said that her body is not absorbing water no matter no matter how much she drinks and so her gastroenterologist put her on a medication to help her body produce water wow so what is that is that mean that she's going to eventually lose her colon if she doesn't do something or what yeah she's she's got to um it's probably the same thing. She's probably just been eating too much weed killer uh, most of her life. So she's got to detoxify uh, quickly and she's got to find some wet water. Um, that Fiji water, Dr. Nakuzi found that the Fiji water was the wettest water. But then there's another one, um, uh, write this down, tell her to, to go online and search for double helix. It's an additive that makes the water wetter. And uh, it, it, it will probably help. Um, there's a Dr. Um, Clark, Dan Clark, that uh, swore up and down that this double helix was, um, was, uh, was the bomb. You add it to the water and it makes it wetter. And she might even have a conversation with some of those Kangen representatives because uh, they, they claim that their water is the best and it's done so much things to it to alkalinize it and make it more absorbable and yada, yada, yada. So, and I think there may be some Kangen reps that are on this call now. So maybe after the meeting and the business meetings, one of the Kangen folks here that have Kangen contacts can also put you in touch with them, okay? Okay, thank you. You're quite welcome and thank you. Adnalina Williams or Victor? Hey. Yes, yes hi, this is Adnalina. Hey, um, Adnalina. Hi. Um, I wanted to uh, briefly speak on uh, what you were saying about hanging in there with the um, headaches. I had, uh, I'm not a, I've never had a problem with headaches, but when I started back on the uh, micro daily, I started having really seriously bad headaches and I knew I wasn't drinking enough water, but I was in a lot of pain and I didn't I knew if I drank, the more water I drank, the more I have to move and the more pain I have to experience. Mm -hmm. So I wrote it out, like you said, I, I just hung in with it. And uh, honestly, it got better. The headaches left and um, uh, I'm drinking more water and feeling so much better. I can tell uh, a difference in my body and my pain. So I've got less pain. And I don't have the headaches. And uh, my uh, numbers for diabetes are really good. They haven't ever been real high because they were on, I, was, I got diabetes onset by steroids for uh, sarcoidosis. So I just wanted to say, please hang in there, whoever that is about the uh, headaches. And then I don't know if someone already asked this, but I wanted to know, Jonathan, if it's, okay to, is it ever okay to take more than one of the brain uh, capsules? Yes. <laughs> um, Alfreda says yes, but I take, um, sometimes I take the jury, my, my jury's still out on that one. So I, I, I don't know enough about it yet, but I will trust whatever Alfreda says on it. So she says, <laughs> yes, you can take it. Take yeah. more than one. You can yeah, take more than one at one time. Yeah. I take like sometimes two in the morning. Okay. And then I'll do one at night. Oh, okay. And okay. I find that, um, cause I was, one, I was forgetting to do it at night. So, and I find, and, and now I'm back, back on one and one. Uh, okay. so it's like, uh, you know, more in my system. So I'm clearer, but, but it's like, if you take it at night, then your brain is clearer in the morning. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh man. I, okay, that's good to know. And the calcium from Immunitech is wonderful. I've used it for years and it, it is the best calcium. Knocks out cramps and uh, leg charlie horses. I mean, yeah. within it's minutes. Really? Within minutes. Really yeah, I good. Gotta, I got to get that. Mm -hmm. it helps. It I don't even drink milk. Yeah. Yep. Thank you very much, Adnalina. Thank you. Uh, John, okay. can I have my Your hand, hand is up for the next one. Yeah, um, I have one of um, one of our our customers in our in my group 
um, they have uh, bladder cancer and he's have, they're having a really tough time with it. So I wanted to know um, if you could uh, speak a little bit about that. And I've spoken to you about uh, this person before. Um, and so I don't know if he's still on, I have to look, but uh, if he wants to comment himself, but if you could speak to um, like the dosage of what he needs to be doing. The, um, the 666 protocol we found was working, but, um, but I mentioned last week that, that I heard, I haven't found out from who the doctor is down in Puerto Rico, that is swearing up and down that two packs of hydro every two hours has been knocking abnormal cell activity out the park. So um, I'm curious as if some what would happen if someone tried it. So uh, I'd start in the morning with breakfast and just try that two uh, two packs uh, every two hours until would that he, be waking hours or yeah yeah you yeah go to sleep yeah yeah during the waking hours. Um, but I would also make sure that they're they've got their lymphatic system working really really well. Mm -hmm. So um, add a rebounder. Uh, to their protocol and every hour on the hour do like 10 minutes on a rebounder so to uh, to make sure the lymphatic system is doing its thing because the um, if, if the bladder is having issue that means that the ability to detox is being diminished is being affected so the kidney is going to be working harder uh, the liver is going to be working harder the lymphatic system is going to be in trouble so uh, i would i would make sure to add being on a rebounder to that mix now, um, this is going to maybe let you know I, I don't exercise, but what's a rebounder? Uh, oh, uh, a trampoline. trampoline. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, but and anybody who uses, by the way, everybody should be on a rebounder. Right. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Because you have no idea what gravity does uh, to your body. We give all this attention to our circulatory system, but nobody's paying attention or very few people paying any attention to the lymphatic system. It runs parallel to the circulatory system. It's just as important. And, and most of us are not exercising. So if we're not exercising, you gotta replace that with something. The one thing you can do to help your lymphatic system is a rebounder. And if you do 30 minutes every day, even if you break it up to five minutes, six times a day, then that's, uh, it's amazing what it will do for your lymphatic system and your health. So get the kind with the bungee cords now, not the one with the springs, because that's hard on your joints, but a, a, a small trampoline that has the bungee cords, a, a rebounder of some kind, that's the one that's gonna help um, be the easiest on the body. So thank you for that question, Alfreda. Um, Amelda, Amelda Isley is our next one. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure uh, my my aunt who took the samples is getting was getting dizzy. So she said, "I'm going to stop it for now." So what do I tell her with that? She's dizzy. She's not taking any prescription meds. That's the only thing that she took, and so she said, "I am just so dizzy. I can't do anything." Which which one did she take that made her dizzy? The micro daily with regular? Uh, yeah the regular with CoQ10. And she got dizzy from it. Yeah, she's just she dealing with she's just dealing yeah. with Herxheimer effect. That's all. It's just detox reaction. Hmm. But they don't like the reaction. So how how do I really convince them that it's going to go away? Okay. Um, you can't you can't convince anybody that it's going to go away. Um, if if she simply if she's happy where she is, let her be happy where she is. But if, okay. she, if she's looking for a solution and she wants to improve her overall situation and get the weed killer out of her body and lower her level of oxidative stress, Micro Daily will do it for her. But she's okay. got to follow the program. But if she doesn't want to follow the program, you know, back in the, old, in the old West in this country, you could lead a horse to water, but if he didn't want to drink, it just wouldn't drink. That's right. Yeah. Okay. I'll just tell her that. Thank you. Yep, we'll uh, we'll be happy to help her though. But if you want to do a three way call one day, just let me know, and I'll do be happy to try to do a three way call with her. Okay, I'll ask her. All right, very good. Thank you, Imelda. Thank you. I think I accidentally put somebody's hand down. I don't know who it was that was after Imelda, but Hazel is up next. 
Okay, I remember what was my question. Ah, you got yourself a brain boost. <laughs> but let me tell you something first about the brain boost. The brain boost, I've been taking it uh, because that's what happens to me, right? I go to the store for the milk, I come back and I come with eggs, right? And I'm like, this is ridiculous. So I've been taking the brain boost. And then just a few days ago, actually, uh, I was already in, uh, in bed and I was meditating what I did for the day. And then I told my husband, I said, honey, I think I got a revelation today. And it's like, what was it? Imagine we were in bed right in the middle of the night, but I just have to speak it out. And I said, I remember, I am remembering exactly today that project that I was doing. I am remembering that at 7.04, I started my project and at 7.58, I finished, right? Wow. And I said, yeah. And I said, that's the brain boost. And it's like, <laughs> He's like, Lord have mercy. I thought you got revelation like John saw something in Revelation, you know, so uh, so <laughs> I said, for me, it's a revelation. For me, it's a revelation, Jonathan, because why do I remember 704 and then 758? Because I'm, I'm very, uh, there is there, okay. I am very meticulous with my time. Like, how long does it take me to put on my makeup? You know, oh, wow. I'm very meticulous. So I remember 704 and I was done at 758. You know, it was less than an hour. So, well, hey, that brain boost is working for me, okay? Today, that's, uh, I that's got... That's very good. I can tell you this, that um, I asked Dr. Nakuzi because I hadn't listened to any of the... Um, of his lectures on it, but I was on the phone with him once and I said, so what's, what's the deal with this uh, brain boost? Is it really that good? He says it's food for, uh, for neurons. So the cells in the brain that want to produce new neurons, this feeds that and, and supports the production of new neurons. I said, I knew you could grow new brain cells. And he says, oh yes. And he went on and on and on about this and the antioxidants and the blah, 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 all this other stuff. And I said, okay, okay, I'm going to be taking brain boost. That, that's it. And Alfreda was the first one today to say to take two. So I'm going to start taking two in the morning and see what happens. I want to be yes, Einstein. Yes. So anyway, go ahead with your question, <laughs> uh, Hazel. Was that your question okay. or that was your comment? No, my, qu my question is, I was just going to tell you, it was not the brain boost that did it to me today. It's because I was taking a picture of the screen and sending it to Rebecca. And I said, Rebecca, you need to... Oh, my question to you is this. Can we send this uh, screenshot that we've been taking over here to our, uh, to our clients? You know, like Dr. Prasad, there is a picture there. It's talking all about Dr. Prasad. You know, mm -hmm. he's published Absolutely. and wrote books. Okay, so Absolutely. we that. Absolutely, okay. no problem at all. You can take um, take any screenshots of that. You can send me an email and any particular slides or pictures that you want, we'll be happy to send it to you. Okay, but anything you put out here, it's yep. okay for the public. Okay, yep. Absolutely. That, that, that was it. I want you to share these uh, videos on social media. I want you to encourage people to subscribe to my channel. We need more activity because otherwise we're not going to get the word out. We, yes. um, I will tell you this, for any who are looking to be, uh, become health advocates, your timing is, uh, is real good because uh, we're, we're starting to penetrate into some areas that's going to actually be very good. We're going to need a lot of support from health advocates because the level of interest and the level of customers that will be coming down the pipe, you, we're going to need you guys. Otherwise, we're going to have to open up some kind of a call center down in Costa Rica someplace to, uh, to be able to respond to it. But, <laughs> but you guys will benefit from it if you, um, if you hang in there and uh, stick with the team. Well, uh, my other question is, and I'm going to tell you, we're going to Hawaii, Jonathan. We're going all the way to Hawaii because yesterday I was in a Zoom, uh, anniversary Zoom party with this Hawaii friend. But her problem is um, she, she, uh, she, um, she faints, you know, and then she said, even like, uh, you know, her husband is giving talk on the platform. They had to bring, bring him down because they have to oh. go to the hospital. Yeah. And then um, it happened in Hawaii. They were in New York. So they thought it was like anxiety attack. And so that's why they moved from New York to Hawaii, but it happened again in Hawaii. 
it's before a form the of uh, that's a form of cataplexy. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know that because I did not ask her specifically. And now she's gonna have MRI in the brain to see if there's something going on there. So, do you think what can I tell her about this? Um, um, what, remind me to send you. There's a link to a, a gentleman who was um, he was in the army and was having. He would just be in the grocery store and would just fall on the ground and. And um, everyone in the store knew that just give him 10 minutes and he'll come around. But he would go into a semi-catatonic state. And um, it stopped when he got on, on uh, micro daily. So I can send you his video. So just send me an email and okay. remind me or text me. Okay. Okay. I will I will introduce this to her. Yep. We're going to Hawaii. Very good. Very good. <laughs> we need to be in Hawaii. We'll take some vacation over there. We can write it off. Thank you very much, Hazel. Samantha's our next question. And thank you very much for that uh, brain boost feedback, um, Hazel. Really happy about that. Go ahead, Samantha. Hi. So um, I have a couple of questions to piggyback off of what you had mentioned earlier regarding the water. And I know um, from a previous call, you had mentioned about half the body weight. Um, so in this particular case, you mentioned about the double helix water and another type, but how it makes it wetter. So if someone takes that, can they lessen the amount that is actually needed um, per day, like that half a body weight? So say they're taking double helix, can they now, instead of taking half of whatever the, you know, 150 is, take less? I suppose in theory that might be the case, but uh, that's, I don't think that that's ever been tested. And uh, personally, I would not recommend it. I okay. would, uh, I'd recommend you stick with this, get that water in. Now, if for some reason you find yourself, you're sloshing around and you're going into that, you know, over, over wet state, then yeah, start cutting back. But um, stick with half your body weight analysis. What do you mean by sloshing around? Um, what's that condition called? Um, I got I I I a thing of too much, a, a, such a thing of too much water. There is, there is such a thing as too much. Too much water is just as bad as not enough. Um, so that's what I'm saying. If, if you're in that, in that state, um, anyway, do Google it and find out what is, what is that condition called when you take, when you're drinking too much water, it's a hypo something or other. I, I forget what it's called, but, okay. uh, but no, you don't want to go to that, to that point, but because we've never, I've never tested that out. I have no idea to what degree that double helix will work. And even when I was drinking Fiji water all the time, I still, my target was still always half your body weight in ounces. Okay. And so to, to speak to that, um, I know you recommended Fiji, but like, for example, our emergency kits and things like that, where we're looking at, um, you know, um, in case of emergencies. And so yeah. I don't know that Fiji has little packets, you know, I just know them from the containers that you use in the store. So what in cases of emergency where we're having to steal or still maybe taking the micro daily, you know, whatever else we need with that. Right. To get sufficient water for, um, you know, those kinds of kits. Do you have any um, suggestions or recommendations? No, no suggestion on that at all. In fact, uh, Joanne and I were just today was talking about what we could do to make sure that we had um, sufficient water supply. Um, when it comes to emergency situations, just get the best water you can. We use a Seychelles filter. So I, I ordered a couple of plastic Seychelles filters mm -hmm. and we have that in our emergency kits. That will allow you to take, this is gonna sound kind of gross, water out of the toilet and filter it and it would be drinkable. That's how good Seychelles uh, mm -hmm. filters are. Um, I think you can, you may, maybe it'll still order, well, I don't know where you can order those, but you can just Google that online. But Seychelles is one of the best. Um, water filters that you can use and are uh, good for being able to put just inside some kind of an emergency kit. But, you know, when you are in an emergency situation, do the best you can. That's all you can do. Is that like the life straws, the filters that's, that come Very in? Very similar. The yeah, very similar. How do you spell the Seychelles? S S E Y C H E. I think it's L L E. Okay. Spelled just like the island in Italy. Okay, great. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Appreciate your questions. This is your first time with us too, Samantha, isn't it? 
No, just the first time on video. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was uh, introduced by Veronica. By Veronica, hiding in the background on us. Well, nice to meet you and glad yeah. to have you with us. Thank you. Very informative. Yeah. I appreciate it. Excellent. That's good. Glad to hear that. Share it. Share it on social media. Tell people about it so we can get more traction out of this. Let's see. John Lawrence has a question. Oh, it's actually Ruth Lawrence. Ruth Lawrence. Go ahead, Ruth. Okay. I have a friend that has, her husband is waiting for a kidney transplant. And each time they try to measure it, measure him up with someone is not working. But in the meantime, I would like to tell her about the micro daily because I heard someone else on the on the webinars here talking about that they were had was told that the kidneys was better and that they the doctor wanted to take the quarter out of their arm. So I was like, I like to know a little bit more about that and what do you think? How does it work on the kidney? Can you give me a what? Any uh, any organ issue is going to uh, improve because most of the time some organ deficiency is because of oxidative stress. Um, Alfreda, one of Alfreda's clients, I think, also had a situation where their kidney function was down to like five percent, and then uh, they went on, I think, micro daily along with lymphatic flush, and um, after some period of time, the kidney function started to get better and better and better. So that it's it's just that simple. You know, get them started, and uh, if they'll start taking it, all you can do is wait and see what happens. Because if uh, if it's dead, there's nothing that anybody can do. But if there's a chance, there's a chance with microdaling. Okay, so how long does the kidney go before it's not any good? You say five, so what is it zero? That's what I'm guessing. Oh. That would be my guess. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, if if you're still alive and you're breathing, there's always some chance that organs in your body can improve. Exactly. We had one, um, one man who uh, doctors said that his bone marrow would never produce red blood cells again, healthy red blood cells. Never. That's what his words. He said the only treatment for him was blood transfusion, then total bone marrow transplant. Those were his only options. And um, for religious reasons, he would not choose a blood transfusion, so they put him in hospice. Not only did he not die, he's still alive now. That was like five, six years ago from... Mm -hmm they claim his bone marrow would never produce healthy red blood cells. So sometimes, you know, doctors can make a mistake. Diagnostic equipment is only as good as, as it's, you know, uh, calibrated to be. So, so the microdaily, I know that it's going to help, even if he's uh, never, he's going to help his other problems because he also has- You got it. You got it. And it's going to help with the, um, with the crisis that he goes through every time he's dialyzing. Oh, really? So, oh, yeah, yeah. His, 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 his experience going through dialysis is going to just lessen tremendously. <laughs> We've had, you know, folks on this call that have mentioned how, uh, how much better they've done on uh, dialyzing when they add micro daily to their, to their diet. So no matter what his situation is, he'll get better by making his body more nutritious. And there's nothing that he's taking that Michael Daly would actually aggravate or no. cause any problem to. No contraindication at all with any medications. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So let, let us know how it goes, please. I'm looking forward to hearing that story. All right. Okay. Very good. All right. Sonia, Sonia Design has a question. We're getting down to the end here. This is a lot more questions than I expected. Okay, uh, just quickly, I just wanted to uh, uh, ask about the calcium and magnesium. If it, is that only because you said uh, any women over 40 have to add some more? Is that only with the ones with diabetes or that's true for all women over 40? Um, I, I would suggest um, for all women over 40, because when I asked Dr. Prasad about it, I said, there's a statement in your patent on diabetes. He says, oh, all women are, are deficient in magnesium and, and calcium. Once they get over 40, they should supplement. Okay. I said, well, okay, that was not a mistake. Then he says, yep, supplement calcium and magnesium. <laughs> okay, so, so if that is uh, the case, uh, how much, uh, how many milligrams for 
every uh, woman should have a total of about 2,000 milligrams of calcium per day. The magnesium, I'm not sure, but I know mm -hmm. with calcium should be about 2,000 milligrams of, mag of calcium per day, combined total. All right. Okay. But now keep in mind that you're getting some calcium in your vegetables. Keep in mind you're getting some calcium in other things. So uh, I would suggest maybe somewhere around 1,000 milligrams would probably be sufficient. All right. And magnesium, you don't know. I mean, it just... Magnesium, I'm not sure of. But but you can't overdose on magnesium. The worst that can happen is you get runny stools. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, brother. <laughs> uh huh. You're quite welcome. Thank you. And Imelda, we're getting out to the end of the road here. We're, we're starting to recycle. Yes. Um, for somebody who's taking Coumadin, can they take uh, Brain Boost? Because I think there's a contraindication with the uh, Tameric and uh, Coumadin. Yeah, they need to be careful. So, mm -hmm. how, how, so they have to stop them if they're taking it. They can't take it. How if, how careful could they be? Yeah, if if they're taking a if they're taking Coumadin, um, no I brain. Would be, I would be cautious about taking anything that's going to thin the blood. Okay. The yeah. last thing you want is for somebody to accidentally bleed out. Bleed. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You're quite welcome. Thank you. All right, folks, thank you very much for all your, uh, your questions and your phenomenal uh, support in there. Now, uh, for the record, um, please keep in mind that the information that we provide here is not to be considered to be a substitute for a visit to your primary health care uh, physician. Uh, uh, I'm not a medical doctor. My name is Jonathan Jones, and I don't ascribe to be one. We strongly recommend that you seek the competent medical advice of professionals that you trust before making a decision. The information provided here is for educational purposes only. It's all part of public record and we're passing this information on to you as members of the Healthcare Support Association uh, of America. Testimonies that you've heard are all uh, anecdotal. We cannot, we don't know the clinical circumstances behind anyone and the stories that they've shared about their particular uh, health and wellness journey, okay?